What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another lead code challenge. This is called Peak Index in a Mountain Array. Let's call an array A a mountain if the following properties holds. There's going to, uh, the, the length has to be greater than or equal to 3. And there exists a index I such that all the values on the left side are less than it and all the values on the right side are also less than it. So essentially, all the values on the right side are going to be sorted decreasing order, but it's less than whatever value that we're trying to find, and all the values on the left side are sorted in increasing order, but it is less than of what our current value is. So given an array that is definitely a mountain return an index i, if any, that such that this exists okay so in this case all the values on the right side is less than the current value of one all the values left side is less than current value of one so they return one here we have all the values on the left side here okay is less than all the values of the right side uh, of the current index that we're at okay so we're returning the index right so here 0 1 this is that's 2 so between 2 all the values on the left side is gonna be less than 2 all the values on the right side is also less than 2 but this is decreasing by this is decreasing or descending order so this is decreasing okay 1 0 alright guys so I am going to see give you time to see if you could figure this out and if you can come back an hour later if you can't then I'll explain how what I would do in this situation so what you could do is basically just create an index called i equals zero and then just loop through it through it while i is less than a dot size we go through the array and every time such that every time that a at i is less than a at i plus one whoops then we're going to increment i so we're this is essentially saying that oh i should go to i minus the length minus one so yeah we're, this is essentially saying that we're going to start from zero and we're going to keep going to the right and every time that we see a value that is less the current value left side is right is less than the right side we're gonna keep going then in the once we get to one where it's not because the right side uh, the right side the our current value is going to be greater than some value of the index right next to it sooner or later then this this would stop okay so then after that what it's going to do is it keep going until we go to that and then I'll just return I. So let's see if this works. You could do it this way. I hope this works. If it doesn't work, then let's see. Ideally, this should work. Oh, time limit exceeded. What is that? Okay, okay, hold up. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to it. I is zero, I is less than zero. If I is less than I a of I plus one should increase I um, should keep going until it reaches to the uh, mid time limit exceed uh, zero let's see zero 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 let's see zero, one I is less than eight out size minus one hmm. okay so essentially we're gonna keep going right there this shouldn't be time limit exceeded though. Let's see, zero. Let's see, let's see. In the test case, zero. Zero is less than new size three. Is zero less than one? Yeah. Plus one. Uh okay, oh oh whoops. Okay. This should be in here. Whoops, my bad. Alright, then I plus plus. Now let's run it. Okay, yeah, so that works. Submit it, 
see if it works. And it got accepted. Essentially, this is saying the reason why my eye, uh, this part has to be over here is because otherwise the loop would essentially get stuck there and I would never get incremented. So that's why I had to put that there. But essentially, you're saying is that while my beginning index, I start from the beginning and I go to the end, while my current value is less than the the value on the right, the the one after it, then I'm going to keep increasing my index. Then in the end, I will return my index. That's essentially what I'm saying in this case because sooner or later you'll get to a part where our current value is going to be greater than this, and that's the one we have to return. So this is my implementation of this. Now let's see what the solution is. So yeah, so basically my implementation was like this. Okay. So what the better approach is, is actually to use binary search. And remember how binary search works? Essentially is, is that if I have an in beginning index, right, and then yeah, let's see, int low is equal to zero. High is gonna equal to a dot size minus one. Let me just type this out for you guys. So how binary search is, if you remember, we take the middle index and essentially is we essentially what we do is we add hold up mo is equal to mid plus one high is equal to mid then we return low So let me first run this code and then I'll explain to you guys what it's doing and why binary search works in this case. So remember how binary search works is that if you're given whatever number, you want to search for it, right? And essentially is, is that it lets you, binary search lets you discard all the values between the middle so it you search through the middle one the current middle index and then if it's less than it then we know all the values on the left side can't be it right so then then you go to the the right the right side the middle of the right side and then you search of that and then then if that doesn't work we go through all the values on that the left side and then it would keep going and keep going right so that that was how binary search works. The reason why it works here, because let's I'll show you guys. We start our low here, and this is our high. And this is our high. Right? Now, is the middle, which is high minus low divided by two. So this is zero, one, two, three. This is the index. Two minus zero is 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. So this is the middle. This is the middle. Middle. Okay. Is the middle less than to the right one? It's not. So then I set my high to be the middle. So now our high is going to be in this this middle. Right? So now we that means that we could discard whatever we're searching on the right side for a of i minus uh, a of i less than a of i plus one. High as high is now equal to middle. Now is low less than high? Yes it is. What is our middle? Middle is gonna be high minus low, which is one minus zero which is one divided by two, which is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Is a at zero less than 
a at 0 plus 1, which is 1. Yes, this 0 is less than 1. Okay, so then our low is now going to be middle plus 1. So our middle was here. No, our middle was 0 here, right? Now, because of what we were doing, our middle was here, right? So now our our a at middle plus 1, our low is going to equal a at middle plus 1, so low is going to be here. And is low less than high? Yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. And then it returns low. So it returns this. So why does this work? Because think about this. Every time we go through binary search, all the values, it's going to be true, 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 true. And then it's going to be false, 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 false. Because at this point between here and here, we know these values are not less than, A of I is not less than A of I plus one. Like in this scenario here. In this scenario here, A, um, one is not less than zero. So we know these, whatever values on this right side is going to return false, right? If we were to search through the right side. So because we know that those the values on the right side will return false, once we get to that condition, we could just set our high and equal to mid middle, and then we could you stop our condition once we return a a uh, true a true true true, and then once we return the index of false in this case false then we could just stop our condition and then set that equal to our low or we could change our low and return that part of our index essentially that's what we're doing so I could I'll, I'll, here I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you guys one more time I'll put it in Visual Studio and I'll explain it again the reason why we're able to do this is because is that on the right side, all these values are going to return false, right? So if in our comparison, once we get to a value that is returning false, we could change our search to not do that, right? So we're going to always maintain this value of searching here. Our binary search will keep going whenever this this scenario is true. Once we get to a part where these two intersect, where high is now like at the point of low, is not when high is not greater than low anymore, where it's about, about equal, either equal or less than, that would mean our condition would now return true, uh, return false. And then because once we get our first false, that means that we could use binary search and then return our low, which is our the index where you're currently at where the first time it's false. And once you do that, you're able to determine the point where it stops increasing at its peak, the first false that occurs. So yeah, that's basically how you do it. Uh, I don't know if I should really show it you guys on Visual Studio because that's, that's basically how you would do it. Yeah. If you have any trouble, if you guys want, if any of you guys know how to explain this better than I do, please put it in a comment section below why binary search works this in this case. But I think I explained it. It's mainly because you want to find the first false in this scenario where this returns false. In order to do that, you, you could change your low and high index such that our high can now point to the middle. So we're going to discard all the values where it is not where it's true essentially we could discard those values okay so yeah rate comment subscribe i'll check you guys later peace